conditioning blocks again today. So block A, block B, four ends of each, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So you can take about a three or four minute rest between blocks, but keeping everything very consistent throughout each. So first one is a kettlebell hang clean and push press. So I'm averaging about six repetitions per side here. Again, it's kind of the aim is consistency, it's sustainability. It's not looking to try and go as hard as you can in the first round and just die out by the last round. So um, aerobic power, we're pacing ourselves, but we're, we're making an effort, but still pacing. We're not looking to crawl along. We're not looking to try and sprint hard out of the gates here. So rhythmic, steady, sustainable pace, 30 seconds, and then 30 seconds rest. So after the right side is done, then we're going to go on to some switch lunges again, steady pace in this one, um, averaging in around 30 or so per set here. So 30 seconds of switch lunges. Again, a bit of rain floors where the ground is a bit slippy here, so I probably start to short change my steps a little bit as I think my foot slips a little bit once or twice. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what's going on. So again, steady pace, 30 seconds, 30 seconds of rest. So then just um, obviously for balance, we're going to do our hang, clean and push press on the left side. And again, um, I've qualified bits of this or snippets of this work out previously by saying I'm not a kettlebell guy. I've um, done one or two kettlebell certs a long time ago. Um, so I'm not going for a typical kind of swing, kind of clean if you can call it that even. So it's almost like an upright row nearly. I'm just trying to extend through the hips. I'm keeping the weight close to me and I'm just dropping the elbow under fast. So it's kind of um, on the way up. Extend the hips, shrug, and drop the elbow. So I'm not giving the kettlebell room to come way up over my shoulder and then back down and crash on me. Just get the elbow under the kettlebell fast to absorb any impact, just to close the space, and then push press overhead. So for round number two, I'm just going to give you a bodyweight alternative and we're going to keep it simple. We did a lot of them yesterday if you're following the workouts, um, but if you weren't following the workouts, no excuses, you're well rested. We're just going to do 30 seconds of push-ups. This will substitute the hand clean on the right side and I suppose the hand clean on the left side. So this will be kind of pretty much our upper body pressing movements on this. So push-ups for 30 seconds. Obviously with the body weight um, movements, we can stick with the switch lunges for um, our lower body piece. So they can remain the same again, looking for steady tempo, steady pace. Try to land through the heel on the front foot, so we're not landing all up on our toes. Again, keep the pace consistent. The amount of repetitions we're getting should be consistent. And if we did this workout right, or something similar last week or the week before, you might even find that you might be squeezing in one or two more extra repetitions for 30 seconds, which would be an improvement in your um, aerobic power, aerobic output.
So for the third body weight piece, we're going to do uh, V ups. So it's going to be push ups, rest, switch lunge, rest, V ups, rest. That's our body weight option if we don't have it, access to a kettlebell or a dumbbell. So that's um, two rounds done. We have our kettlebell or dumbbell variation and our body weight variation. So again, with this, we're looking to keep things consistent, set it's aerobic power. You probably will find, like I said, you might um, be increasing your repetition range by even one or two reps compared to what we did last week that we before, which is a good sign. But we're not looking to kind of get, like say, you know, 10 or 12 push presses in the first round, and then like three or four in the next round. Obviously, depending on the weight selection you have, you might be able to do a few more than what I'm doing here, that's fine. Um, but it should be fairly consistent throughout all of your sets. fresh in the wind and the rain. Bit of a novelty to be honest. Except that uh, makes the switch lunges a little bit more treacherous or hazardous, so yes, a little bit of slipping going on here, but again, trying to make sure we're landing solid on the front foot and we're pushing off the front leg as well. So again, trying to keep consistent with the repetitions that we're doing. And um, what I ended up doing here was, because I'm obviously right side dominant, so it might be hard to tell, uh, weak on both sides. But um, I was doing six on the right side, so I was making sure to get six on the left side. Even if it spilled over to like 32 seconds or something, obviously I wanted to keep both sides um, level in terms of repetitions. So you might have to do this as well. I'd recommend doing this. If it takes a second more, um, you're doing 31 seconds. You're not actually cheating yourself, don't look at it that way. Just try and keep left and right side balanced in terms of repetitions. You can hear this kind of breathing going at each stage of the movement. So clean, breathe, push, press, breathe, catch, breathe. So again, it keeps it a bit cyclical in nature as well too. Um, and it gives you a split second to try and just tighten my posture before I press overhead.
the last set of split launches, and for whatever reason, I think I've got a couple more reps in here. The all match the last round. Again, just doing the repetitions the same on both sides. The last piece for block A. After block A, we can get like a three or four minute rest. So time to recover, regroup, and then what we'll do is we'll move to the same format for block B, four rounds, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And we'll go through those movements now for block B in a second. So block number two here, we're gonna start with the goblet thruster. Again, just picking away where I can kind of keep things sustainable. That 24 kilo kettle does taunting me there, but I think it would be a, a, a significant drop off due to um, maybe technical breakdown, probably local muscular fatigue as well here. So I'm keeping things consistent. And again, as I noted, I'm probably doing an extra repetition or two per the 30 seconds compared to what I was doing last week, which is good, I'm happy with that. Um, so 30 seconds of thrusters, 30 seconds of rest. So movement number two, kettlebell swing. I'll bring a 24 kilo kettlebell back into it. Um, and again, steady, consistent pace. I'm, I know I'm getting in around 20 repetitions of these guys for the uh, 30 seconds. Russian style swing, don't do the American swing. Um, never really done it, only for a CrossFit competition I did once about 10 years ago. So Russian style swing or no swing. Set up to watch so I can see what's going on in terms of my time for the dead bug. So I'm going to do a static dead bug. Um, see all sorts of variations of dead bugs, but here what I'm doing is I'm trying to, I'm trying to brace through my my core, my midline. So I'm pushing my lower back hard into the floor, keeping my knees over my um, hips. And I'm trying to my I've seen variations where the lower back, or sorry, the upper back, shoulder base, necks on the floor. Um, either or works. But I just want to try and really push the lower back hard into the ground. So 30 second. Uh, I'd say it holds, but I guess I am kind of working here, so isometric contraction-ish. Um, but as I say, we're not just like freezing in the position, we're working in the position. So 30 seconds here, 30 seconds rest. Again, just um, body weight alternatives if we have no access to weights, so the weights that, um, that we do have access to aren't appropriate for the task at hand here. So I'm just doing air squats, um, 30 seconds of air squats again. With this body weight, I'm probably up the pace a little bit, but again, it should be sustainable.
So instead of the kettlebell swing for this round, I'm going to just throw in mountain climbers. But with the mountain climbers, I'm just going to throw in the variation of um, a, a lateral twist, I guess, or, you know, um, just bringing my knee to my opposite elbow. And 30 seconds here, 30 seconds rest. And setting up my timer. Uh, third movement, third piece again is the dead book. So the body weight alternatives or body weight variations is just air squats, mountain climbers or twisting mountain climbers, and the dead book. I'm gonna go back to the weights in a second, but there's your options there for block B. Again, back to the goblet thrusters. <coughs> so I say to people, it's pretty much it's a squat from the waist down, which I know it sounds very obvious, but you'll see people changing their stance for this, so they'll short cut their range of movement. So it's a squat from the waist down. Um, probably stays now, in fairness, with this weight's a little bit light for this. Um, I probably should man up and use a 24, a person up and use a 24 uh, kilo dumbbell or kettlebell. Obviously, if that's something in between, it'd be ideal. But again, it's in the name of consistency. So what I'm trying to do here is even I'm aware of the repetition range I was getting last week. I'm trying to even just do one more this week because it's still an improvement. So kettlebell swing is then next. So the swing is again, I think it's important to really try and focus on the breathing as well. So the sharp breath out on the way up, it's like a pursed kind of breath, keep my core tight, glutes to the top, squeeze the glutes, and kind of breathe in on the way down. So really trying to hinge on those hips, drive the heels down on the way up, extend through the hips. So I'm not letting my hips shoot forward in front of me. I'm using the, the glutes at the top to put the brakes on so my hips don't shoot forward. So again, like a, a vertical extension as opposed to a horizontal extension of the hips. the dead book and that's going to be round number three for us we're going to come into the last round then so again everything is fairly consistent throughout the four the four rounds of the block
So onto the last set of goblet thrusters again. It's a nice enough kind of pace for this one. I said aerobic power. I'm feeling like I'm working, but I'm not feeling exhausted here. And um, probably could have added an extra round today, but just for the the purpose of the. Well, I guess the the constraints was time for the zoom workouts, and also if I start filming videos longer than what I'm doing today on this one, my laptop tends to have a stroke or a heart attack, and I could be two weeks uploading this video, and I don't want to do that. So you're only getting four rounds out of me. Last set of kettlebell swings and I always try to remind people is because the last set is not to switch off and go into autopilot and kind of coast over the finish line. Not like to sprint over the finish line, but keep things consistent. So um really just kind of keep your technique tight here, focus on your posture, don't switch off, don't start daydreaming about what you're gonna have for lunch. You're not done yet, so stay switched on. We got the last set of dead bugs coming up. I don't know why, for whatever reason, I found a dead bug the hardest part of um, of this round or this block for me today. So I make sure to watch there because I really, really do not want to do one second more than I have to on this one. Um, 30 seconds, again, being honest with yourself, trying to embrace and actually use the movements properly for 30 seconds, not just kind of um, hanging out here and gaming it for 30 seconds. So when that's done then, that is our fourth round finished and that's block B finished and that is Today's workout finished. So there we are now done. I can get back in out of the rain and the wind.